honorable viewers i welcome all of you to my youtube channel department of english today i would like to share with you the fairy queen written by edmund spencer today i would like to share some rain analysis so let's get started edmund spencer's prime motive in writing the fairy queen was to demonstrate virtues of gentlemen or a noble person The verses were to be illustrated by a series of adventures of the twelve knights who represented on virtue is among the twelve gentlemanly verses of King Arthur before he was king. For instance, a red cross knight in the first book represents holiness and the rest of the five knights with Spencer completed only in six books represented temperance friendship, chastity, justice, and courtesy. Edmund Spencer, 1552-1599 Spencer's period of the Renaissance was greatly interested in the idea of a perfect gentleman. The typical Renaissance man would be open and critical minded studies and adventurous practical and talented in many dis disciplines and so on but spencer added strong moral and religious qualifications in the idea of the gentleman unlike the model man of the medieval age who was supposed to be saintly and also unlike the internal renaissance model of intellectual man however Spencer's model was a mixture of the moral man whose moral and spiritual virtues are practically tested and verified in the corp corporal world. Spencer is a synthesizer. The people of his time were interested in reading the book of God's Arts, the Bible, and passed their exams in the book of God's Arts, Nasser or Wal. His gentleman is on who has proved himself a worthy scholar, a scholar as well as a courtier. So, Spencer is a Renaissance Christian idealist in this sense also. The virtue of holiness needs some explanation since in modern parlance This quality would not normally be associated with a military man, but rather with a churchman. It must be remembered that throughout medieval and Renaissance literature books were written and sermons preceded one the Christian warrior, signifying that every good Christian was to God one the armor of Christ or Christ, the fight against sin. For Spencer, then, the term suggests or suggests righteousness. The virtues, even of truth and holiness, a book on can to one were in medieval Christian ideals to be put to practice by the Renaissance man. At the beginning of the story, the Red Cross is a young man aspiring to hol holiness. But until now, his virtue is not yet tried and verified, so he commits mistakes before he achieves perfection. This knight represents one of the moral virtues required in the perfect gentleman like Prince Arthur. Una, whom the knight, Una is a heroine. Whom the knight is placed to serve and defend stands for truth or the one true religion. Una of her fights means truth is one. Book one is the story of their joint venture. They are setting out together, battle against erode and hypocrisy. Chapter one. Then their separation, their reunion, success and return. The symbolism in the customing. Of the hero and heroine tells us that the battle is not only an adventure of a strong man, but also the adventure of a strong and moral mind. 
It's a Christian, Protestant, English, Civilic, as well as the Renaissance humanist battle against evil forces that stand on the way of becoming a man with all this virtue. The knight bears a bloody bloody cross, the emblem of Christian faith. The lady is garnet in white for purity and innocence. Though she wears a veil to suggest that truth is not always plain to see. The encounter with monastery road in the dark wood suggests that the type of trail constantly facing the man who aspires to righteousness, but who is untried in the ways of the world. The tangling coils of the monster's trail and her vomit of sticking books and pamphlets almost overcome the hero who is only saved by the counsel of truth and the force of faith. The strength, courage, and good intentions are not enough to meet this trail. The seemingly pious hermit who offers his humble shelter to the Red Cross Knight and Una Archimigo, the Archimagician, stands for hypocrisy. The knight's blunder in this episode, when he considers himself to be acting on high moral principles, is succumbing to the machination, sorry, mechanisms of a vicar's temper who is apparently good but actually evil. The sick manner of the devil's behavior, his weakness is a sign of inexperience. A future of failure to distinguish appearance from reality. On the level of allegory of the history of mankind, the opposite signifies the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, or man's loss of his original purity through the subtle persuasion of Satan or Satan or Abit. Finally, according to the historical allegory, the separation of the Red Cross Knight and Una through the machinations of Archimango or Archimango stands for the outliving of Protestantism and the restablishment of the Catholicism in the region of Queen Mary, Mary Tudor or Bloody Mary. Arsimego, the instrument of the separation, is identified as the Pope and Dusa, Dusa who figures in following episode, the present Queen Mary of Scotland. The evil characters are strictly as well as symbolically Catholic people. Spencer's recurrent concern with glory, Gloriana and the like also reminds us of the Renaissance concept of repetition through the pursuit of knowledge and adventure, which was the passionate desire of every Renaissance man. Spencer had, however, Christianized the concept of glory as an achievement of moral life, too. In Penny Queen, Queen Elizabeth symbolized glory, Prince Arthur represents Magnificence or magnificence, which includes all verses. Magnificence means great in thought, speech, and action. If glory is the name or achievement which Queen Elizabeth had already got, magnificence is the quality or potential that Prince Arthur had proved in order to win her hand. In the fairy queen, Spencer assumed that the queen was already perfect with glory, besides all other necessary virtues within it. And he wanted to demonstrate how the old king, Earl of Leicester or Arthur, had advanced to prove his gentlemanly or uh, knightly virtues, cast in form of twelve adventures by different knights, but only six and a part books were completed.
The combination of the twelve gentlemanly moral virtues makes up a magnificence which is required to win the love of the glorious queen. The epic was on one level a eulogy praising the queen and her favorite or lover as the epitomers of all human virtues. But Spencer also wanted to instruct with delight the land throng throng of his time, showing them low their prince had achieved the qualities of gentlemen or noble person. Spencer was a celebrant of English nationality, emperor and royalty. The Fairy Queen is at one level a tribute to his person, Queen and the Earl of Leicester as well as a praise of the brave knight and faithful citizens of England. At times the poet appears to be mere flatterer. He identifies Queen Elizabeth with mythical goddess as an embodiment of all per uh, perfection and as paragon of all verses. He calls her Glorina were the emperors of all nobleness. Melophobia were the princess of all sweetness and beauty. Marcella were the lady of all compassion and grace. Beltomat were the armed votary of all pure. Cynthia, the poets and tranquil in, in learning a queen who was a goddess heavenly bright or mirror of grace and majesty dry, the invocation to fairy and queen. The eulogy is too much sometimes. But the fairy queen is not only a flattery. Spencer was a Renaissance man influenced by Renaissance new Platonism and humanism, a simulator of physical beauty, love, romance, and adventure. Though he was a profound idealist and analyst of good and evil, the fairy queen is basically a romance on its surface, a romance about love and adventure of brave British knights and faithful ladies. Fairies' words and faithful loves shall moralize my song, stanza one. It is in this sense a romantic epic full of adventures and marvels. Dragons, witches, games, battles, enchanted trees and castles. It has intricate plots, amazing episodes, heroic characters, elaborate descriptions, and so on. But due to the Allegory suggested by names of character and places and historical, religious and mythical allusions, the epic also teases moral lesson along with the delight of surface romance. As Spencer started in his letter to Sir Walter Relike, the fairy queen was also supposed to be a courtesy book. He intended to teach his learned reader and the people the virtues of a perfect gentleman through its moral, religious, and political historical allegories behind the delightful romantic story. He said, The general in purpose of the entire book is to fashion a gentleman or noble person in which virtuous discipline. He planned to write twelve books, each on would be an adventure of night representing on moral words, which he would prove by fighting against the evils in, in the course of the adventure. The first book, for example, narrates the romance adventure of British knight who represents holiness on the moral level. Saint George, the patron saint of England on the legendary level and all of the qualities of the Earl of Leicester. Uh, he could complete only six books narrating the adventure of six knights representing on holiness, temperance, chastity, friendship, justice, and courtesy. 
The other six are never mentioned and Spencer didn't write those planned books. All the 12 knights were supposed to represent the 12 qualities of a noble gentleman, whose perfect example was the Earl of Register. The fairy queen sends this knightly on different adventures as opportunities to prove their gentlemanness, liness, and knightly qualities. For the very queen, Spencer originated a nine-line verse stanza. Now known as the Spencerian stanza, the first eight lines are iambic pentameter and the nine iambic hexameter. The rhythm or rhyme scheme is a A, B, A, B, B, C, D, C, C. The melodious verse combined with Spencer's sensuous imagery and deliberate use of archaic language evocative of the medieval past, as in the earlier Schiffer's calendar, serves not only to relieve the high moral seriousness of his theme, but create a complex panorama of great splendor. Spencer's large and expensive imagination and vigorous approach to the structure made him a powerful influence on John Milton and the Romantic poets, including John Keats and Percy Bysshe Shelley. So that's all about this topic for the timing. Thanks for your patience. Bye bye.